1971, Richard Nixon ended the convertibility of dollars into gold, effectively putting an end to the last remnants of the global monetary system that had dominated the previous two centuries with gold as its foundation. This action triggered significant episodes of inflation, fiscal deficits, and debt worldwide, sparking a long-standing debate on the need to return to the gold standard. But is this idea realistic, or has the gold standard been glorified while disregarding its reality? The modern version of the gold standard emerged in the major economies of the world in the 19th century when central banks began issuing gold-backed coins and bills that any citizen could exchange for gold at a specific rate. As a country's gold reserves grew, so did the money in circulation in the economy, although not always directly. Due to the practicality of using coins and bills, central banks could maintain gold reserves below the money in circulation without encountering problems when citizens demanded gold, as long as confidence in the system could be maintained. This arrangement offered great stability because low inflation and high interest rates encouraged individuals and businesses to save more, spend less, incur less debt, and adopt a long-term perspective. The same applied to governments. If they spent more than they collected in taxes, they had to issue debt at high interest rates, and the market had to absorb it, since the central bank couldn't freely create money to purchase it, given its limitations imposed by gold reserves. This system also limited the trade deficits countries could incur. When a country imported more than it exported, its gold reserves would decrease, leading to a reduction in the money supply within its economy. However, what worked well during a period of low international trade and greater government spending control would undergo a radical change with the event that marked the beginning of the 20th century, World War I. World War I forced many countries to suspend the convertibility of money into gold. The prospects of increased spending prompted people to exchange their money for gold, fearing that exchange rates would be altered and their savings would lose purchasing power. Therefore, to avoid depleting resources necessary for the war effort, the major economies temporarily suspended the gold standard. After the war, some countries reinstated convertibility, but the onset of the Great Depression 10 years later presented new challenges for the system. The typical approach taken to combat the Great Depression was to stimulate the economy through government spending, leading to significant fiscal deficits that forced governments to devalue their currencies and prohibit the convertibility of money into gold. This was the case for the United States, which incurred substantial fiscal deficits with its New Deal program to stimulate the economy and devalued the dollar from $20 per ounce to $35 and prohibited citizens from owning gold to increase government reserves. This version of the system, which lacked the natural constraints and stability of the classical gold standard but still retained many of its limitations, persisted until the end of World War II, when the Bretton Woods Conference, attended by 44 countries, was held to establish a series of agreements on how the international monetary system would function from that point forward. The most significant outcome was the establishment of the U.S. dollar as the base currency of the global economy, with a convertibility rate of $35 per ounce of gold, and other currencies pegged their exchange rates to the dollar through international agreements. Under this system, any country could request the conversion of dollars into gold, and the United States, having accumulated a significant portion of the world's gold reserves in previous decades, was in a strong position to assume this role and ensure international confidence in the country and the new system. However, everything would begin to change in the 1960s with several events that led the United States into excessive spending. These events included the social programs of the Great Society, the Space Race, and the Vietnam War. This spending resulted in an increase in debt and a significant trade deficit, causing dollars to accumulate outside the country. The accumulation of dollars led to diminishing reserves to back them up with gold, with many countries requesting convertibility and the gold reserves of the United States declining. Finally, in 1971, Nixon suspended the convertibility of dollars into gold, marking the beginning of a new era. 
with the suspension of the convertibility of dollars into gold, a fiat system was adopted, where the value of a currency is primarily based on the confidence in the government, specifically the central bank, to control the money supply and inflation. However, this system has a serious problem that has been the cause of dozens of episodes of hyperinflation worldwide, excessive spending, and a constant increase in debt. While the gold standard was characterized by its rigidity, this system shines due to its lack of control. For example, it allows a government to overspend, with its debt being acquired by the central bank, increasing the amount of money in circulation and eroding the purchasing power of individuals. The central bank sponsors the spending of the government, creating an incentive to spend as much money as possible. This doesn't only apply to governments, but also affects citizens, because during periods of high inflation, people shorten their time horizons and quickly spend their money before it loses value. While saving made sense before, now it is necessary to learn how to invest. And in our channel, you will find a great deal of content to help you with that, so don't forget to subscribe. Although this system can have low inflation periods, and that was the case for most developed economies before the pandemic, despite the high money creation that followed the 2008 economic crisis, it is important to clarify a couple of things. Firstly, the way inflation is measured worldwide, using a basket of goods and services that people in the country consume, is not a perfect measure. It includes adjustments for quality changes, which are difficult to measure, and changes in people's consumption patterns that can alter the measurement. With people like former Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker questioning whether the general change in prices can be accurately measured in modern economies. Secondly, global debt has reached historical levels, with implications for growth because an increasing portion of the budget goes towards paying interest. Debt alone is not a problem if it grows at a rate lower than the economy, but that is not the case for the United States, China, Japan, France, Canada, the United Kingdom, and many others. All of this leads many people to constantly argue that we should return to the gold standard. But how realistic is that idea? The gold standard is not universally supported or rejected and is often the subject of a wide-ranging debate. Supporters argue that it is a system that provides stability, government control, and low inflation, while opponents argue that it is an extremely rigid system because the amount of money is limited by the amount of gold that can be produced, which, in turn, leads to higher interest rates. This results in low inflation but also makes credit expensive and scarce, causing low growth. However, recognizing its benefits is one thing, and thinking that it is realistic to reintroduce it is another. Critics of the idea point to the changes that have taken place in the world in the nearly 100 years since the disappearance of the classical gold standard and the 50 years since the demise of the Bretton Woods Agreement. These changes would create challenges that would make the possibility of returning to this system unrealistic. Starting with the political will, needed to reduce the fiscal deficit and avoid money creation to finance it, which would be accompanied by the need to reduce debt. In a scenario of higher interest rates, the debt would become unsustainable for many countries. Moreover, the current monetary policy of developed countries aims to achieve annual inflation rates of 2% as a means to erode debt. In a gold standard system, where deflation is more common, debt would increase in terms of purchasing power. In addition to these obstacles, there are physical limitations. Gold is scarce, and its availability has not grown at the same rate as money. While under the gold standard, the amount of money in circulation was, by definition, equivalent to the amount of gold held by central banks, the approximately 200,000 tons of gold in circulation now have a value equivalent to $11 trillion, while the money in circulation worldwide is approximately $100 trillion. This necessitates an adjustment that could have notable consequences for the economy. Finally, there are the changes that have taken place in international trade, which has increased 40-fold since the early 20th century. These changes could hinder the implementation of the gold standard because a country that imports more than it exports would experience a depletion of its gold reserves and a contraction of money in circulation. This could pave the way for increased trade barriers and capital controls. All of this makes the possibility of the gold standard being reintroduced in its original form unrealistic. However, this does not mean that it is an idea that should not continue to be brought into the debate because the current system is not without problems. 
This ranges from extreme cases where governments destroy their currency through excessive money printing to cover deficits from spending well beyond their income, which they use to buy votes, to developed countries that have accumulated a large amount of debt and continue to do so under the pretext of increasing growth. However, they end up spending that money inefficiently and seeing their debts grow at a much faster rate than their economy. Both scenarios lead to inflation, which affects the poorest people who have fewer assets and, therefore, less capacity to adapt, while benefiting those who have more assets. As long as this continues to happen, the discussion to change the monetary system will remain relevant. And as long as it continues to be misused, the statement by U.S. President Herbert Hoover will be more relevant. We have gold because we cannot trust governments. If you want to learn more about the Bretton Woods system and the inflation that followed the breakdown of the convertibility of dollars into gold, I recommend watching this video next.